Many people have asked whether it's legal to sleep in your camper van overnight, so I thought I would address some of the important points that come out of this in this video. So welcome back, I'm the Black Belt Barrister, helping you to understand law. So please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. So the starting point with camper vans is that they are not really treated any differently than any other vehicle. So there are certain things that you need to keep in mind when deciding to sleep in your camper van so that you don't get into any kind of trouble. Starting with where you park and potentially sleep in the first instance. Now obviously if it is privately owned land the starting point is you will need permission to be on that land in the first place and certainly if you're likely to sleep there. And with the new police crime sentencing and courts bill there are potentially going to be some more serious consequences if you are found to be trespassing and sleeping in a camper van on land without permission including a fine that's likely to be up to two and a half thousand pounds, a potential prison sentence which is likely to be around three months and perhaps perhaps even confiscation of the vehicle itself. So I will come back to do another full video if and when this bill actually goes through and what that means in terms of sleeping in your camper van. But aside from privately owned land, there is no specific law that prohibits you from sleeping in a camper van at the roadside. But that brings us to another consideration that I've talked about in my videos, being drunk in charge of a vehicle. In other words, if you've been drinking and you are over the alcohol limit permitted to drive, even if you have no intention of driving that vehicle, if there is still a realistic prospect that you might drive that vehicle whilst over the limit and a police officer has cause to breath you and you are found to be over the limit, you may still be charged with being drunk in charge of that vehicle. So this would always be fact dependent and depending on the circumstances you may be able to convince an officer quite easily that there was no realistic prospect of you driving that vehicle because you've parked up for the night and you are most definitely going to sleep for the night. And this situation will depend, as it very often does, on your interaction with the police officer and whether they are likely to believe what you are saying. Moving on to other areas like car parks, whether they are privately owned car parks or publicly owned car parks, most of them will have a rule that might say you can leave your vehicle overnight but you can't sleep in your vehicle overnight. That's usually because it is going to change the nature and the purpose and the use of that car park which might interfere with the permissions that the land has in the first place. This might go for both public and privately owned car parks. Although Although some of them, particularly with motorway laybys, might have a sign that you can stop over, which means that you can stay there for one night, but no more typically. Some pub car parks might have a similar sign saying that you can stop over, meaning you can stay one night, but not more than one night. But do bear in mind that the laws on drink driving and being drunk in charge apply to a road or other public place which will be fact dependent with the car park and the land as to whether or not the public have a general unfettered or unrestricted access. So in most cases the public will have access to the car parks even if it's privately owned. On the other hand some of them might say members only and there'll be a gate at the front so only members are supposed to enter the car park meaning that the public do not have unfettered access. So either way you need to bear these laws in mind if you are planning to sleep at the pub car park. One possible defence is to show that you had no intention of driving driving, but more on that in another video. There are also different rules in Scotland and the Scottish Outdoor Access Code provides a good guide to this and Scotland is a popular attraction for camper vans and people sleeping in camper vans and it's reported that upwards of 60,000 people throughout the UK live off-grid so to speak in a camper van and have to comply with each of these rules and regulations so it's always worth bearing in mind these restrictions, obtaining permission from any landowner where possible and of course making sure that you stay on the right side of all of the drink driving legislation so that you don't end up being prosecuted for any of these. So I hope that's been a useful overview. Remember to subscribe and thanks for watching.